kind of trouble can't he get himself into in San Francisco? I don't know. It's according to what kind of gals he's meeting. <laughs> I'll get it. Peace, engine. Peace, pale face. Hey, Dave, come on in, buddy. <laughs> Confounded red skin wrangler. How many of our cat did you lose today? Davy, how you doing? Fine. How about some coffee? Thank you. I'll get you a cup. In, Miss Cartwright. Hello, oh, Davy. Bill Corby said you want to see me. Yeah. Davy, I want you to pick out two of the best ponies you've been breaking for me and bring them in tomorrow. I need them for a, for a gift. Who are they for? I mean, uh, you want the best in the string? Or? The very best. The best you've got. I want them for... Uh, for Chief Lone Spear. You know him. I remember him. The ranchers and Lone Spear are signing that treaty tomorrow, and... Uh... It's a waste of time. You can't trust him. Davy, the sacred ground is being returned to the Ute tribe. Everybody's guaranteed not to trespass on it. It means a great deal to them. Doesn't mean a thing to me. Pops, maybe you better come by my place tomorrow and uh, pick out them horses yourself. Signed tomorrow. The sacred ground will be our sacred ground once more. I, Lone Spear, chief of the Utes, will make my mark. The white man will take the water from our land. He will take only a small part of it. And in trade, he will give us back the land of our ancestors. I do not trust them. The white man trusts the Ute. He has promised never again to set foot on the sacred ground. And if the white man breaks his word, we must kill. <laughs> Good ponies? Well, I think so, Paul. Ask old Dave what he thinks. Best in the string. Well, good. I sure hope Lone Spear will be pleased. I don't want any hitch in the signing of this treaty. That sacred ground means a lot to the Utes, and the water rights sure mean a lot to the settlers in the valley. So the settlers can use that water without a treaty? Well, not without a fight. It's a pretty short fight. Utes wouldn't last long. You can say you want about the Utes. They're still your people. My people, are they? Mr. Cartwright hadn't have found me. Where my people left me, I would have been killed that day. I was only five years old, but I remembered. I always will. My people. You're my people. Only ones I've got. Except for Haas here, a guy couldn't ask for better. 
Well, we, uh, we better get going. Yeah. Mr. Cartwright, do you mind if I come along? Sure. Sure. Good idea. Dave, you and me ain't been down together in months. Besides, you did such a bad job on them broncs, and I need some help. I swear, Hoss, about the only thing you don't need help on is eating. Oh, you don't remember the time you cooked out there on that hunting trip, right? Almost noon. Don't worry. They'll be here. I can't say that I enjoy being kept waiting by an Indian. Now, he said he'd be here at noon. Judge Nelson must be known. Here he comes. Spear. Ben Cartwright. Welcome, my friend. We are here to speak as men. And my voice shall come from the heart and from my people. We shall see them if we are friends. Uh, this is Judge Nelson. He will witness the formal signing of the treaty. Of course, you know all the ranch is present. The treaty with Chief Lone Spear and his people will be a thing of trust and honor. I want Lone Spear to know that I consider it great privilege to be here on this solemn occasion. Let us enter the lodge and speak. <laughs> Right, Moon. You wait for me here. Impressive old gentleman, ain't he? Yeah, he sure is. How about some cold drink? I can use it. Sounds good. Dave, you want some drink? Yeah, sure, why not? It's gonna take these savages quite a while to power up. Grace, that's what it is. Meeting with them, bargaining with them. Well, the way you can bargain with an engine is from behind a rifle. What do you have, David? You have beer, I'll have sarsaparilla. Well, sarsaparilla's good for me. Fine. Bartender, three sarsaparillas. Oh, uh, bartender, you uh, serve engines in a white man's saloon? These cartwrights, uh, they don't care who they bring into a white man's saloon. You know, I bet you they'd even bring in hogs if they had any hogs. Wouldn't smell much worse if it did. Anything I can't stand is the smell of a stinking engine. Refill, Frank. Just saving you the trouble, Frank. Wouldn't want a white man drinking out of that glass. Not after the likes of him. Just what seems to be you two fellers' big problem, anyhow? Let me straighten you two fellers out on something. There's just an outside chance that we two might be even more uncivilized than our Indian friend. Now, have you got anything to say to us? Nothing. Good. Bartender, there's another sarsaparilla. 
I'll let him go, give him a chance to cool off. I said savages. I'm sorry. Your eyes, they show great hurt. It is I who am sorry for you. There's no need. I have a job, a life. I live like a white man. There's much food to eat, and I have a house to live in. What's wrong with this engine? What? He thinks he's a white man. Well, maybe we ought to teach him some white man manners. I will say goodbye now. How about saying goodbye to us, engine? Real nice. We're waiting, engine. Like I said, Judd, maybe we should teach him some manners. Now, how about you, honey? Are you going to be nice? Look, leave her be. Out of your engine. Get away from her. Uh. Ah. Now, wait a minute, honey. You just stay here with Get me that Indian. I'll see him dead if I have to follow him from now on. You right, David? Yes, thank you. Who is this white man? What is he doing? Just hold on, I know how to do not speak to you, but to her. Who is he? This man tried to protect me, and you were wrong. He is not a white man. He is an Indian like us. Like us? Look at him. You call him Indian? He is neither Indian nor white. He is the hunting ground without buffalo. He is the land after the fire, when even the roots are burned. Indian? He is not even a white man. <laughs> Stop. Joseph, horse, what's the meaning of this? Well, Paul, I can speak for myself. And I speak to you, Lone Spear. Who is this man? He is not a man. He is a half-breed. I am not a half-breed. I'm an Indian. You hear me? An Indian. A youth. Like you. Well, you're all ready to go, Paul. Good. 
Well, brother, you behave yourself here. As long as you're going to the state capitol, don't mean you can kick them heels up too high, you know. Oh, don't worry, Hoss, I won't. Hoss, I'd like you to do me a favor. Yeah, Bo. Uh, I've told Lone Spear that the treaty's in effect as of right now. Except, of course, I've got to get the paper signed by the governor, and I'm not sure that Lone Spear quite believes it, so I'd like you to ride over there today and again tomorrow and sort of quiet any doubts that Lone Spear might have. Don't worry about a thing, Paul. I'll keep everything calm and quiet. All right. been waiting for you. You were the last of the women to come. If I had known you were here, I would have been the first. I had so many things I wanted to tell you, now I've forgotten them all. You need not say anything. Yes, I must. I came here just to see you, and now... You said... You are an Indian, a Ute. Is this true? Yes, it is. But you live as a white man. I would like to tell you why. And I will someday. You need not tell me at all. Yeah, let me. <laughs> thing my pa said was that that sacred ground was yours and no white man was to set foot on it from this day forward. The sacred ground is dear to my people. And the water is dear to the ranchers. And I trust that you will guarantee them that water. Horse Cartwright speaks well and from the heart. But he speaks of guarantees. What guarantee is there that as more white men come, they will not take back the land of the sacred ground. I know that in the past, the white man has smoked the pipe many times in sealing treaties, and he's often broken them. But this treaty is going to be signed by the governor of the state, and the ranchers have already signed it. And we Cartwrights will stand behind every word of it, and you can depend on that. The word of a Cartwright is one that I trust. Give me the pipe. Lone Spear. Do as I say. There are few of your race with whom I would smoke. Wait. A brave does not carry water, and my people should not see it. Well, I am your people. But you've been too long away. Our customs are not as the white man's. And my heart fears for you. White Wolf will... He doesn't worry me. But it has long been understood that White Wolf and I would plant side by side two reeds and live in one teepee. This is Bright Moon's wish? 
this bright moon's fear. And it will not happen. the meaning of this? This white man's dog would take the woman promised to me. Is this true, my daughter? It is true. While one white man smokes the pipe, another brings dishonor to my daughter. I am not a white man. My skin is the color of yours. You have lived as a white man. You are a I am what I am because Lone Spear is a coward. Baking dog! Before you die, or I do, I allow you to explain. Davy, you apologize to the chief right now. Lone Spear spoke of honor. I say his mouth fouls the word. Is it honor to leave a child on the field of battle? To leave him to the white man's revenge? Would Lone Spear call this honor? He would not, and he is listening. Then listen well. For it was you who did this. You ran before the white man's guns at the Battle of Red Fork, leaving behind my mother and father dead, and a child, me, to whatever mercy the white man chose to show me, had not Ben Cartwright found me. No, I did not choose to be what I am. You made me what I am, and now you turn from me. Your knife. I will speak, and if my words do not satisfy, I ask you to take my life. The Battle of Red Fork was one where we fought with honor. When the sun rose, there were over 200 of my people ready to die for what they believed. When the sun set, there were only a few like scattered grains of corn to greet tonight. No longer an army, disorganized, scattered, defeated. And you were left behind. I can only say this. I would have given my life to take you with us. If I had known you were there, If you do not believe this, do now what you must do. Perhaps it is I who should offer my life to you instead of... Instead of what? of asking that I be reunited with my people. And then I might speak with your daughter, Bright Moon, of marriage. Before that day comes, you will lie with your ancestors! Silence, White Wolf. It is not your place to speak. Perhaps it is not even mine. But as chief, I do. If it is your wish, you may become one of us. As for Bright Moon, there must be time. But in the end, she alone will decide. Come. Lone Spear. I will return to my tribe to begin a new life. I have spoken. Lone Spear has heard. Wake up! 
the whole pond of... Hey. Davy, what... What is all this? I just wanted you to remember this night. The night I became an Indian again. Yeah, I... Uh, I ain't likely to forget it. I came to say goodbye, Hoss. What does that mean? Well, I'm quitting my job. All the stock is fed and watered. Uh, it'll be all right till you find another man to take my place. Tell Joe and Mr. Cartwright goodbye for me. You're, uh, you're really serious about all this, ain't you? Yes, I am. I reckon you got your eye on that little gal, huh? She's gonna be my wife. She's pretty, real pretty. Yes, yeah, she is. Hope everything works out for you. It will, it will. There you go. Peace. <laughs> about this promise to marry ceremony. All I remember is what I saw when I was a very small boy. You saw? A small boy is not supposed to see. Well, it was dark. I didn't see very much. <laughs> For shame. It don't matter what they're doing. They get a better shot at that engine. Hold it. you with all my strength in all the years to come. And I will serve you well in all the years to come. die fighting or begging for your life. I do not want to fight you. Have you lived so long with the white man that you have forgotten our customs? It is wrong to kill. It is wrong to take the woman meant to be another man's wife. You will fight for her. If I must. <laughs> We can become friends. You 
have won. Bright Moon is yours. Go. See that Davy talk himself out of this. According to our laws and customs, it was your right to kill White Wolf. I could not kill him. Alive, he will someday be a friend. You speak with wisdom. Lone Spear, I fought for Bright Moon. Our custom gives you the right to her. Does she feel as you do? I could not be more happy, my father. are happy too, that our sacred ground belongs again to the Utes. So that your life together may begin there, as it rightfully should. Go now. men say they saw Davy kill an engine by the name of White Wolf. Threw a knife on his back and run off. I don't believe that. They brought in the body with a knife still sticking in it, no other wound. He was probably fighting over that young squaw. Also, I gotta ask Davy some questions. Where is he? He's gone over to live with the Utes. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to ride in there and get him. Hold up a minute, Sheriff. Let me get my horse on the ride with you. So you see, Chief, the sheriff here wants to take Davy into Virginia City. The man you know as Davy is a Ute of this tribe. Yes, sir, I, I know. But you see, we're up against the law now, Chief. And he just wants to take him in for questioning, that's all. He did not kill White Wolf. Did you see the fight? No, but my daughter, Bright Moon, was there and told me how it was. Well, two witnesses here say they saw Davy throw a knife in White Wolf's back. Do you say she lies? I don't say anybody lies. Not yet. What I am saying is I'm going to take that boy in for trial. He is a Ute. You cannot have him. Don't be telling me what I can do and what I can't. You're talking to the law. Now, now wait a minute. There's got to be some way to straighten this thing out. The boy and Bright Moon are beyond your reach. They are on sacred ground, Ute ground, forbidden to all white men. That's right. 
The governor's already signed that treaty by now, and if you go in there, you're going to be starting trouble, and I mean shooting trouble. It is sacred ground. Oh, the crime's been committed. Now, sacred ground or no sacred ground, I got to have the boy. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sheriff, what would happen if I went in there alone and got him? I mean, that is if the chief would permit me. I'll just go to the boundary. You'll bring him in? Yeah, I'll bring him in. If you promise, stay right here and wait for me. All right. Make it quick. talk to you. What do you want? White Wolf is dead and they think you killed him. Come, enter. We will talk. That law work pays pretty good, don't it? Not too bad. Uh, you seem like a nice fella. Be a pity to see you lose that badge. What makes you think I'm going to lose it? One thing you always hear about them Cartwrights is that they're mighty good to their friends. Yeah. That Davy's been on their payroll a long time. I ain't saying Horse would break the law, but on the other hand, he ain't above helping an old friend get away. Even if that friend happens to be a knife-throwing, backstabbing murderer. Now you let them two Utes get a head start on you, and you ain't ever going to get near enough to spot their dust. Come on. Deputy told the chief that they found an Indian knife in White Wolf's back and that, that he had to bring in. But White Wolf was alive when we left him. This deputy sheriff's got a couple of witnesses that claim they saw you throw the knife. It's that Judd and Skinner. Those two. Lies. Every word lies. Hell. Well, look, Davey, all you got to do is ride in with me and tell Judge Nelson how it happened, and then it'll all be over and done with. No, House, it won't. The word of two Indians will not stand up against the word of two white men. They'll hang me. I'm sorry, back. horse. I gotta have that boy. This is youth ground. It's sacred ground. Don't you understand that? Us? I'm gonna do my duty. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna start a war. That's what you're gonna do. All right, so I start a war. <laughs> made enough foolish mistakes, Sheriff. Put that gun away. One false move and we're all dead men. White men on Ute ground, sacred ground. I'm just trying to do my duty, Chief. Trying to bring a murderer into trial. Who do you call murderer? Davy there. And you would have a trial. In Virginia City. On Ute ground, we have Ute trial. 
here and now. Did you throw a knife into White Wolf's back? No, I did not. My daughter, were you with him when he fought White Wolf? Yes, my father, I was. And what he has just said, is this true? It is true. These two say they saw the knife thrown. That's right. I say you both lie. No, sir, it's the truth. You bet your life. We will see. Then we'll have trial. Which of you fights for the white man to prove the boy lies? Oh, wait a minute, Chief. The knife fight isn't gonna prove anything. Besides, you're only starting another murder. In your courts, some men put their hands on a book and lie. In a youth trial, some men feel the knife's kiss of death at the throat and still lie. Some men, but very few. of you fights. I choose you. Oh, stop this. You can stop it. Our land, horse Cartwright. Your father signed the treaty giving it back to us. You'd land, you'd law. Unless the word of your father is worthless. You'd land, you'd law. You. Fight! I lie? No. Did you kill White Wolf? No. It wasn't me. Then who? Judd hates every red skin he ever saw. He 
hates you more than any. When he saw a chance to put a knife in White Wolf. Let him up, Davy. We all know the truth now. Come on, you two. We got some talking to do back in town. Now, Dave, just because you've gone back to your people don't mean you can't come back to the Ponderosa for a visit. You come see us, you hear? I will. And bring your wife. Thank you.